What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Stay True Podcast. I am your host, Madison Pruitt Trout, and here with the one and only Grant Trout. Let's go, baby. I I know. How, I'm fired up. How crazy is this? For those of you watching, you're probably very confused. You're like, where are we? On what's happening? What is happening? Are they in a dungeon? Are they in a it's dark so room? It's so dark. Why, are those cardboard boxes? <laughs> what is happening? What's going on? Where are we, Maddie Do they, Rose? Is she wearing makeup? Has she showered? She looks beautiful. <laughs> he has to say but that. But where are we? Where are we? I mean, we're looking out into a city right now. Into a city. That We're starts with the letter T and ends with the letter. <laughs> no, starts with the city. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like T. Okay. Wait, where we are we now? Live in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Ooh. What? You guys. I feel so Morgan Wallen, man. <laughs> like, I feel so Luke Bryan on him. It's been so fun. We are it in has. the music city. We are in, like, we're not in downtown Nashville, but we Wait, do feel a little downtown. This is our official, like, this is where, this is us Oh, yeah, saying, guys, we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. But this is like, no one's heard this, right? No, no one knows. Guys, we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. We're in Nashville, baby. On the low. <laughs> and it's... Honestly, the it's greatest so place ever. It's so fun. And I, we've only been here, what, how many days? It's, we're on day four. We're day four. By the time this airs, we will have been here for almost a weeks. month. Yeah. Okay. And we, but right now in recording this video, we have been like, here for like three or four days. We have no furniture we're st- in we're our apartment. We're sitting <laughs> on two little stool, like <laughs> chairs that go around our really dining room it. table. Mm-hmm. Boxes everywhere. We have nothing but a bed in here. Truly. But we have love. We have love. We and have Jesus. We have each other. We have each other. And guys, we just wanted to set it up and, and just get you into where we're at right now as a couple. Yeah. Which is thriving (laughs) i'm like yeah what is it hold on there's a fuzz oh no okay yeah which is thriving we are thriving i have been saying that we have been here for a few days and i truly feel so at home here yeah i feel like this is our place and we live so surrendered that we're like lord we don't know how long you have us in nashville tennessee but we are so excited to be here. We are so excited for the community, the people we've already met. People By are the way, welcoming amazing here. Amazing people in Tennessee. Amazing. We didn't know what to expect. No. Everywhere we go, we feel like we're so welcome. And people are just like excited to have new people in their city. People are so sweet. In our apartment, this lady, I told I commented on her outfit. I was like, girl, your outfit is so cute. And she's like, I don't even know, 50s, 60s. She's cute. Okay. And I'm like, girl, I love your outfit. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go dry clean it for you and drop it off by your door. I was like, like, whoa. Wow. Run into her again. She's like, it's in the dryer, honey. She's like, don't worry, honey. It's on the way. I'm I'm like, like, this is Tennessee and I like it. Hey, it's so fun to be here. We're not, we're not unpacked yet, but there's something cool about picking. I said this, but this is the first time I've ever moved with my wife yeah we've moved before but it's cool to do it with somebody and we so- packed our cars let's get them into okay let's tell you guys about how this all happened what led us to this decision and also what the journey like was here so wait why did yeah. we pick nashville why tennessee nashville let's start with us being in waco yeah me finishing my job and i think towards the end of me finishing my job maddie rose came to me with these puppy dog eyes <laughs> and said, Grant, what do you think about Nashville, Tennessee? Nashville, Tennessee. I have always loved Nashville and I am from Alabama. So I would come to Nashville. I mean, not all the time, but somewhat frequently. Like this was it's not, not a far foreign. drive. No, it's like, I don't know, four and a half, five hours from Auburn, I think. And so my sisters and I, my family and I, we would just beep bop on over here. And I just always loved Nashville. My sister moved to Nashville like eight months ago. And so that was a big incentive and reason why I wanted to move here. I wanted to be closer to my sister. I wanted to be closer to my family, but also have some good friends here. 
and just the city is so cool. And we knew cool we city. wanted to be like near an airport <clears throat> and like yes, Lord, please <laughs> near an airport. Like Waco, thank Guys, you, thank you, don't you even know. for so much. But that airport drive is no joke. Two, two hours, two hours to Dallas or two hours to Austin. Two hours. That's, that's it. So and it wasn't that was the end deal. of the world, but it was it was a lot because of how much we travel. I was driving to Dallas probably twice a week. Sometimes once a week, you know, it depended on the week, but sometimes it got up there two to three times a week and that was not fun down and back two hours. And then you add on a flight. So we knew we wanted to be close to an airport and also with getting pregnant and yeah. having a baby girl on the way. But we, we knew, didn't No, We didn't even know that, but we knew we were starting to try chapter, for a family. We knew that chapter was coming. We knew the chapter hopefully. was coming. We were hopeful that it was coming soon. Yeah. And so we wanted to be close to my family and yeah and just wanted something new so so i was out on it i didn't i just <laughs> oh, like yeah. the first time i told grant i wanted dude, to move to nashville he was like no i'm like everybody's moving to nashville babe. Right? like let's that. not be that couple and and i remember she just didn't really fight me that hard but you were just like i tennessee's amazing and Man, we began to talk about it and pray about it. And then there was one day, I, this is the power of prayer. Yeah. I woke up and Maddie, she wasn't like fighting me about it. I woke up and was like, yeah, like, of course, Tennessee. <laughs> and we had this whole wrestle on like, we've been close to my family for the first part of our marriage. Can we be close to her family now? And part of my heart was like, but I like being close to my fam. <laughs> like I like, what about Dallas? And so I had this like hesitation, but then like, as we prayed, I think you were probably in the prayer closet, but I woke up one day and was like, yes, like Tennessee yeah. makes sense. The kingdom relationships we've built here makes it's sense. It's just an Airport amazing place for, yeah. To well. raise a family, this feels, and we're not like in the heart of Nashville. We're right outside the city, not Franklin, but not in the heart of Nashville. Don't think like Broadway. Like we're not <laughs> overlooking Broadway right now. We're not. It's like Broadway rolling Street. hills, green. It's amazing. And we chose apartment life for a little bit and we're just gonna look for some homes and check it out, but we're in no rush. We're kind of just like, let's get to Nashville and let's figure out I just spit. <laughs> Why'd you say that? I don't know. Cause you could have just kept going and they would have never, it. ever seen it. But guys, see she it. just spit all over her, her and mic he just, now. He just stared at me like, and anyways, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> I don't know, babe. So we made our move to Nashville, but it didn't feel like we had a one night, one moment. Okay. We're doing this. Get him into our first visit what, oh, two yeah. months ago? Of like, let's go see how Nashville is. Well, I first brought it up to Grant and I said, I think Nashville, Tennessee, he was not open to it at all at first. Open, but just not he like. He was really not open to it. But right. it did. It was on the list. We had a list of like five places that we could see ourselves potentially moving to. And it was like all kind of different random places. And Nashville was on the list. But. I didn't know how high the, the chances actually were because a city right outside of Dallas was also on the list. And I was like, that might be higher up for him. But I knew I wanted to try something new. I wanted to be close to my family. And so anyways, I got to pray and, and you guys, prayer is powerful. And I was like, Lord, if we are supposed to be in Nashville, Tennessee, like you've got to make that clear to Grant. I don't want to be the wife that's nagging or begging, you know, him to, for us to move to Nashville, Tennessee. And so I just started praying. I was like, Lord, if this is your will, I pray that you would lay it on Grant's heart. You would lead us in peace. You would lead us in clarity. You would give us just such a, a longing and a desire to be there. You would start opening up the door for opportunities and community. And we watched that happen. But on our first trip to Nashville, our discovery trip, we were here for what, five days? And we, the first two days, we were like, I this don't not, think this is it. It did not feel like it. It was not. It was not it. But we were staying in Franklin, and I learned really quickly that Grant is a city boy. Yeah. It was too country. <laughs> it was too and country. And I was like, But what? I grew up in the country, so I could do the, like, goats and chickens yeah, and, and yeah. acres and all that. And it has this, like, little small town with, like, yeah. a general store. And I'm just like, <laughs> Stop. is that No, our... you guys, Franklin, it, it no, has, like, a Franklin's Publix and a awesome. Whole Foods. And it has, like, the stuff. But where I, we were looking, it was, like, mainly yeah. 
small town vibes. Yeah, and like when we have kids, who knows? Yeah, it might could, be the spot. We could but go like, out there. We were just we weren't there yet. So. We're new to the city. We don't know many people, and we were like, we travel a lot. We need to be closer to the airport. So we landed on a little area right outside of downtown Nashville, and we are loving it so far. I mean, yeah. we're four days in, so. We'll uh, keep you guys new. tuned and keep you guys, yeah, in the loop about how we're liking it so far. But I've been more social the last three days than I have been like in a year. <laughs> guys, in every morning she's like, I have a run with four girls, I'm then like, coffee bye. with five. <laughs> I'm like, what? I guess I'll go to the coffee shop and like, <laughs> He's like wait for oh, okay, you. Bye. Like, what are you doing? I've been proud of you though. Yeah. You've been out and about. But pregnancy I, so I've been doing so good with not being tired. Like first trimester, I was so tired and then second trimester hit and I was great. It felt like all my energy came back. And then lately I've been so tired. I've been having to take like naps during the day. So tired, can barely hold my eyes open. I've just been a little more grumpy and not myself. I think my body can feel the change totally. and just how much, I mean, we packed up like our house yeah. and just, just to get y'all into our world. We, we packed up our house, but we left last week and, and y'all are watching this later, but we left last week having just packed up our cars with all of our clothes. Yeah. We left everything else. All our furniture is still at home. Everything's there. We just packed up our clothes. Which we did in one day because in we had one day, a whole weekend in Dallas. Our gender reveal was in Dallas. We had appointments we there. Stopped. We have not stopped. And we just drove 11 hours straight. And it was so weird because we had to keep reminding ourselves, hey, like, we're not coming back. <laughs> like, this is a move. Like, we're, like, we're leaving. Waco. We're actually leaving. And we just drove 11 hours and have dropped off our clothes and now we're just ordering you know walmart furniture to fill this apartment and it's like we're here yeah it's been a crazy it feels random it feels unplanned although it wasn't yeah it just feels like oh, a little let, unsettled let's, let's you do know? this it's a little chaotic right now but it we're is. here for the chaotic and i actually want to talk specifically on this podcast about Seasons of transition, seasons yeah. of change, seasons of newness, because it can bring a lot of anxiety, a lot of unsettling feelings, uh, you know, feeling, yeah, just like anxious and you, you don't want to leave your house or I don't know, it can bring a lot of different feelings and emotions for different people. And so I want to get into that, yeah. but first let's talk about this 11 hour drive because <laughs> It honestly, you guys, <laughs> was the time of our life. We had so much fun. It was amazing. So so we had the kindest person ever that was already going to Nashville. It was going to fly. She was like, I'll drive y'all's second. like My car. I'll drive Maddie's car. So she drove my car. So I got to ride with Grant, yeah. which was such a blessing because I didn't know how many times I was going to have to stop to use the bathroom. Like pregnancy, I, I pee her, all the time. Her bladder and is. And I just like, I have to like keep changing positions to get comfortable. So I was like, driving might be really hard and doing it alone. And so it was such a gift when she offered to drive. So we drove together and Grant drove the whole 11 hours from Waco to Nashville. And it felt like nothing. And I offered. She kept being like, are you good? I'm like, I feel like I could run through a wall right now. I don't know why. <laughs> it it felt so, so good. It was so great. It, I, we really had so much fun. So we started out the drive at what, 6 a.m.? 6, 630. Yeah, got, got some tacos and coffee. Whipped it for like five straight before a stop. Yeah. And then we got barbecue in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, which was a memory. That, that was, was memory. fun. But we started off like just having good conversation. We were just chatting and catching up, talking, hanging out. And then we got into the word of God and we opened up the word and I talked about what I had learned the last couple of days. He talked about what he had been learning the last couple of days in the word. And then I read a passage um, in Luke. I was going through the book of Luke at the time and read a passage in Luke. We talked about it out loud, discussed it together. And then you're going through the Bible recap still, which has been amazing. And so we listened to what was Ezekiel? Ezekiel. Ezekiel 12, Boy. I think. And it was really good. And then we talked about that. And so that was like even too two hours of the drive yeah. and it set the tone. It did. It really did. It was like this drive is like the Holy spirit is here. There was a, there was a new joy after yeah. that. It was like, yeah, let's just, 
and we just kept talking about life giving things after that. Yeah. Which was cool. It was so good. So that just like set the tone for the drive. And then, yeah, we stopped at a random spot in Arkansas and had some barbecue. Is that honestly really good? <laughs> it was then pretty good. Then that coffee shop. Oh, yeah. Then we stopped at this. It was so cute. It was like a little. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a trailer, like house thingy yeah. with just like in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. That was a coffee shop. And, it and was they also really had good. snow cones, but I didn't get a snow cone because no. I was like, that's a little messy. Yeah. So we got some coffee, hit the road. I think we had like five hours left. Those first, what, like six, seven hours flew. flew. The last ones were like. The last like I feel three, it. we were, we were struggling Man, a little bit. But it's been good. But it was so good. We pulled into Nashville and we got a hotel for the first few nights here because we had no furniture no at bed, the apartment no mattress. yet. Yeah, no bed, no mattress. And then we had to build the furniture. So we had a hotel for the first few days and we pull up to the hotel. It was like the sun was starting to set. We oh were my gosh. like the hills, the rolling hills in the background. It was beautiful. We like yeah. walked to dinner. Yeah. It was perfect. It was so special. We were like, we moved to Nashville. It was so it felt so right. So that's our big life update, guys. We are having a child, and now we live in Nashville, Tennessee. New city. It's been a lot of change in a short amount of time. Yeah. Because, I mean, truly, if you think about it, in the last three months, you stopped working your job at Harris Creek as a pastor. We got pregnant and then found out it was a baby girl. And then we are now living in Nashville, Tennessee, and we moved from Texas to Tennessee and starting over, you know, I got to yeah. find a doctor here and a hospital here for for baby. We're starting over with community. We got to find a new church. That's what's weird is like finding a new church. Yeah. It's like, whoa. And there's so many good churches in Tennessee. But we're also like picky because we had the best church. In yeah. Waco. It's hard to leave Harris Creek. We loved Pastor Jonathan Pacluda. Man, Pastor Jonathan Pacluda. Jonathan Pacluda. That's a that's a good man right there. We love him. So yeah, we're we're a little picky, like so, searching for churches, but we're open. We're looking. Okay, so change is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But you add a, you add a pregnancy on it. Yeah. Get me into right now how you're feeling. Just like raw thoughts. Like we're day four. Everything's new. Mm-hmm. How are you? <laughs> I've had, it's come in waves. So I think the first day we were here, we were both rolling on adrenaline, like just so excited to be here. And I can't believe we're in Nashville, Tennessee. And then I think day two, it was like, okay, we're getting moved. Like we're starting to, you know, put our stuff in our apartment. Was that when your mom came down? No, that was the, I think that was the next day. Um, This was when we were starting to put all of our stuff in our apartment. I was like, okay, This place is awesome, but this is going to be an adjustment for me. I haven't lived in an apartment since college. And so, you know, going up and down elevators, not having packages come straight to your door, like parking in a parking garage. I'm like, okay, I have not done this since 2016. I don't know. I mean, it's it's been a minute. Our our first grocery run, Maddie, Maddie brings up just like some of it and it's like, overflowing and she's like grant you got to go get the rest it, and it's, it's like heavy it's stuff down to like the third underground <laughs> parking and i'm like okay man of the year husband of the year like no complaining and go i'm like and i'm like it. struggling like as he bags. was you were up here with the wi-fi guy and i, I was like so, you gotta go get the rest of the groceries because it was like a case of water dude, i was like i just need you to been go with the wi-fi guy for three and a half hours <laughs> i'm like maddie i'll go get the groceries baby i go and first step out of her car in the parking garage have the this eighth floor to go to bag rips open maple syrup which by the way maple syrup I don't unusual know. choice from you i we like never do to that. make yes i like to make my banana oat pancakes yeah but rare choice and okay i need my maple syrup bag rips open <laughs> a glass maple syrup smashes on the ground all over my pants and my shoes all over the ground i'm sitting there things are rolling everywhere and i'm just like god you are so good to me <laughs> and you are so amazing and i'm like wiping maple syrup off my shoe picking up glass and i'm like i made a video for maddie did you see it i did i was like praise god thank you did you know there was a hole in this bag i didn't know there was a hole in the bag fyi he like that's the first thing he says he comes up and he's like did you know there was a hole in the bag i'm like oh, what oh. I would have told you if like I knew there was, was a whole. Just like, like I was trying scheming. to plan that. <laughs> I'm like, ha ha! I wanted the uh, maple syrup. But it's a journey. Apartment life is but a journey. Apartment life is a journey. It's that has been for sure an adjustment for me. And at the same time, we're so grateful. We like totally. this apartment a lot. 
and the location the location is, is awesome fire people here are so kind and yeah we have a couple friends in the building already we love the guy downstairs Dwight, who, Dwight he's like out, front desk he's just like the homie and he loves Jesus loves Jesus which is so cool yeah so anyways we I am loving it but apartment life has been an adjustment and so I think day two it kind of hit me it was like okay this is gonna be a little bit of a journey um a little bit of adjustment and then just you know we're having to have people come over and help us build some of this furniture and it's just taking time to get the furniture in so we're living in a pretty empty apartment right now and I'm I'm kind of like, okay, I guess I'll work on the floor. Okay, I guess I'll just like lay in the bed. I don't have anywhere else to go. We have like our TV here, but no stand or anything. It's just, it's just on, on the, the ground. Floor. It works. So we may watch a movie tonight yeah. on a pallet. I was like, should we make a pallet? That's kind of a memory. We're going to make a fort pallet tonight and watch a movie on the floor. Vibe. That's cool. We're making cool. new memories. We're making the most out of the situation. And at the same time, like truly so grateful that we have a place. And it's a really cute place. So... It's been fun. I would say that because of just like pregnancy and all of the change, my body is definitely starting to feel it. And so I've been really tired, a little grumpy. You've probably seen me a little more moody than I've been most of pregnancy. You're all right. <laughs> You're, You're all good. right. But I have been really pushing myself to be like social and get out there and make, make friends, meet people. Um, so that's been really fun and I'm really grateful for that because I really, really prayed for solid community here. So yeah, I feel good. Yeah, I do. I feel good. I think it's just like, you know, I'm coasting at like a 6.5 right now. You know, it's like, I don't feel my best. Life is a little unsettling. Yeah. Um, I am, my body is like physically really, really tired and Grant and I are about to enter a really, really busy season. And so I have like six speaking engagements coming up. He has a couple. And then we have all of these Unite events coming up. And so, and probably by the time this comes out, they've already started. So there's just a lot going on. What feels unsettling the most to me is that starting in three days this weekend, we're gone every single week <laughs> from September, October, middle of November. We're gone every single week. So one of us is speaking or we're going to unite. And so it's like what feels hard about this apartment is we're trying to get it so set up, but it doesn't feel like we're getting it set up to like enjoy it and make make it a home. It's like, wow, we have three days and then we're on the road. And it feels like once you're on the road, you want to come back to something that's done homey. and homey. And it feels like we still have things just like laying around and so that's been the most unsettling to me is like we're just about to be on the move a lot yeah. and it feels like it's all we like in Waco we had this refuge to come home to and rest and like recuperate this feels a little bit more transient like and we don't know our places yet like we haven't learned our go-to spots yeah. our go-to coffee shops yeah. like so everything is so new that it's yeah. like okay we're trying this today we're trying this today like and so that's just gonna take time and we're so down for the adventure but it is hard when you're entering into a really crazy season of a lot of travel and being so on the go and then you're coming home to like boxes and not really knowing like where to eat you don't yeah. really have your people yet like yeah. you're you're yeah. still kind of learning your groove here. Totally. Um, so it's yeah. like a little disorienting. I don't know how you feel. Like, how do you feel with the Lord? How's your time with God been? Time with God has been not like, t not where I want it to be. I mean, it's, it's going, <laughs> I'm yeah. getting in my time with the Lord, but I would say because I feel so tired because I feel just so scattered, it's hard for me to even like be locked in in anything right now. So I would say time with the Lord is just okay right now. It's still happening, but it's not as um, intimate and um, the time with Jesus isn't as long as I would like for it to be. Yeah. But I did find a park the other day that oh I really my. loved that felt yeah. just like a forest magical. Yeah. Super cool. You went to it today too. I went to it today. It was so amazing. But yes, it has been a crazy, crazy season. And it's weird even recording this podcast in not stay true podcast room kind of sad it is really sad like i don't know if i'll record another podcast in that room we had a moment where we both were like in there and we were just like okay say goodbye I know. like we don't know really if we're sad. coming back to this like the letters are still on the wall yeah so 
Who knows? I don't know. But it was my little prayer closet. It was my little refuge. It was my safe place. And where I started Stay True Podcast. And you guys have been so amazing. And it has been just the coolest, most fun journey. And we've had some amazing conversations. I would say like the, the coolest thing about Stay True that I've seen for her is like almost everywhere we go now. Someone will run up to you. And I think it used to be like, are you Maddie from The Bachelor? And then it was, hey, I read your book. I read your books. I read your book. And then now it's like almost every time, like our waitress, she's just like, hey, um, your podcast, like it's changed my life. And that's the coolest thing to hear over and over and over again is like, oh, that, that is, that has been my wife in our little closet upstairs that she's prayed the house down. It's so weird because it feels so like homey and like not a big deal. And then we come out to new cities and a new place and someone's like, your podcast helped me understand Jesus more. Mm. And it's so cool that like, yeah, you've been able to do that. And it's that the Lord's blessed this podcast. Yeah. God has been so good and it's, it's been so cool to see like just, yeah, I don't know, just this journey. I had no idea what to expect with starting this podcast and you guys have just been better than I could have ever imagined and just such a blessing and impact has been, it's just been so cool, but it's also just, yeah, it's like the conversations we have, these are the conversations that we have offline and the, the things we do offline. And, you know, like if we're talking about purity, like we're pursuing purity off the camera, if we're talking about discipline, like we're like pursuing discipline off the camera. And so it's like, even the conversations we're having Like these are just, this is how we're living our life and we're just bringing you guys into the word of God and also just what God has taught us in our life. We like our first, when before we started this podcast, before you started it, we were like going to start one together Yeah. and uh, we were like, what should we call it? Like what would make sense for us? And we were like, man, well, I feel like we already have these conversations just alone. What if we just like grabbed a camera and was like, press record And we had this whole idea of like, what if we named a a podcast press record? Because it's as if we're already having this. We just wanted to press Press record record. on the camera. Like there's no preparation agenda. It's literally we press record and we just see what we talk about. And uh, it was a really cool idea. But then we ended up just feeling like, I don't know, Grant. I was working. It was too much. You were in the middle of a job. You'll probably start your own podcast. I I was like, yeah, I'm just going to start my own podcast. I wanted to. So it just, it worked out the way that it was supposed to. But you are essentially the second co-host of this podcast. Which feels so good. People will, people like, (laughs) people will say, I love y'all's podcast. Like people will come up to Grant and I and be like, y'all's podcast is changing my life. Dude, people all the time. They're like, so you and Maddie started (laughs) that podcast. I'm like, Matt, Maddie did. I hop on every once in a while, but it is fun to be on. Thanks for having me so much. He adds so much value. It's, it's amazing. And I'm really grateful, but let's start talking about, okay. For those of you listening, I know that change and transition can be scary. It's, it's unknown. It's unfamiliar. And like I said earlier, it can bring a lot of different emotions. And I think for a lot of us, we run from change or, you know, we um, refuse to step into change or change is just like, it just brings a lot of anxiety. And so I think it's really helpful for us to to talk about this, like just even navigating change and new seasons of life and how you can, I mean, you asked me the question, like, what's your relationship with the Lord look like, how you can, even in the midst of so much changing, how you can have something and someone who doesn't change and who Mm -hmm. is constant and never changing in the midst of that. Um, and, and learn consistency, even in the midst of so much like variables moving around and moving around you. And so I think it's going to be really helpful for us to just jump into some things that are, are helping us right now that have helped us in the past. Like when you moved to Branson, um, and that was a whole new season when I moved to Birmingham, when I went on the bachelor, when I came off the bachelor, I mean, just the different seasons of life that have brought a lot of different change and transition. What has been helpful? Um, what's helping us right now. And then even, yeah, just like some practical steps or scriptures that 
you know, hopefully will help you guys if that's something you are afraid of or currently navigating, um, because it will come. Change will come. Change yeah. is not something to be scared of. Change is something to embrace. Mm. Um, and there is a way to handle change and transition well. There yeah. is a way to do it well, and there is a way to do it with confidence and peace. And so let's talk about it. Let's do it. Okay, so what would you say helps you in seasons of change and transition whether it be just like spiritually or emotionally, yeah. what, what helps you in those seasons? Like you said, um, change is, is good and change is biblical and change is everything that our world revolves around. And so you look at four seasons, summer, spring, fall, winter, you see God created this world mm. that's changing and you don't have summer for all four seasons. You don't have winter for all four seasons. There is a time, Ecclesiastes 3 says, Solomon says this, there's a time for everything. Yeah. There's a time to build up. There's a time to tear down. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to cry. There's a time to dance. There's a time to mourn. And so you see just, if you're not a believer, if you're not a Christian, you look at our world and you're like, man, there's a time when all the leaves fall. It's really cold. The sun's not out. The skies are gray. And then there's a time when fall hits and spring hits and it's blossoming and it's green and it's vibrant and the sun's out. Why does God do that? And you just look at the universe and you're like, okay, change is something that God said was good. And so I think, number one, we have to start with this mindset that Things should not always stay the same. That's and good. I think we get in the posture of, I wish things were like they used to be. Mm. Or remember the good old days. And we want to grab onto a season and press pause and just ride that season out for the rest of our life. And yeah, the Lord's good. like, you're going to be ever changing. And so when you hold it like that, you're like, oh, the trees lose all their leaves. They're stripped of everything in order that mm. they can grow more, yeah. more abundantly. They can blossom more mm. in the same way. There's seasons in your life that you will have winter seasons where you feel like you're stripped of everything and you're losing all your leaves. And the Lord's like, just wait, just wait. I'm actually stripping you so that you can come back stronger and come back more and your blossoming will be even more beautiful. Mm. So change is good. Number one, change is from God. Number two, you you said this and I got, I'm just going to reiterate it. Like there is someone that does not change. Mm. James one says, our God does not change. Hebrew says he's the same yesterday, today, today and, and tomorrow. So when I wake up and I don't know, like one thing I really want to talk about is moving to Tennessee. It's been four days. I'm realizing I had sacred spots in Waco that just felt like I could connect with God in. Like that, I, someone said this, they said, Grant, find your altars, find your sacred altars in Tennessee. And I thought that was so good because good. in Waco, I had little moments that I would spend time with God. I would take certain walks. I would sit on the living room floor. But what's new about change is you have to recreate those sacred altars. Mm. So I have to find new spots in this city, whether it's a coffee shop or my living room or this balcony, wherever it is, yeah. I'm finding those new spots. That's been the hardest part for me is I'm waking up going, oh, I used to just so automatically do this with the Lord. Now it's like, where should I go? Yeah. So it's been, it's been hard in that sense. And then the last thing I'll say, change is something that exposes and also refines. Mm. And so if God never changed our situation and changed our scene and changed it, we would grow so comfortable, meaning we would grow independent. We would grow independent of needing God. And so when you experience change, Maddie and I are in a deeper dependence than we were five days ago. Mm -hmm. Five days ago, we were way more comfortable than we are now. And guess what? We're having these moments where we're coming together going, can we just pray together? Yeah. Can we just sit and pray? Why is that? Because it feels like everything's new. Everything's seemingly harder right now. Mm. And God does that on purpose because God moves his people. Every Old Testament story, every New Testament character was never allowed to stay comfortable, mm. never allowed to stay stagnant. Stagnancy is the opposite of faith. That doesn't mean you have to go move cities. I'm just saying God moves his people. Abraham, leave everything you know. David, leave everything you know. Joseph, leave everything you know. Peter, leave the boat that you know everybody. I mean, the disciples, like 
Leave behind everything, everything you know, you know, and follow me and you will follow me. And so that is the call of a believer. Not necessarily. You don't have to go move cities, but you got to be ready when he calls you yeah. wherever he calls you. You can't step into all that God has for you by trying to stay comfortable. You cannot. You can't. <laughs> and and that's hard because we like comfort. Yes. We like comfort. But that's the thing is we have too many Christians who want to be comfortable instead of pick up their cross. And it's like when you yeah. pick up your cross yeah. and you follow Jesus, that is never comfortable. No. And that might be, there's been seasons of life where God getting me uncomfortable was keeping me put. 100%. Was, Maddie, stay you here. You will stay here. I know you want to go. I know you want to be active. I know you want to go make this happen right now. I need you to stay put and I need yeah. you to trust me. And so not every season of getting uncomfortable or God, you know, doing something new in your heart means you have to, like he was saying, move cities or, you know, go do something or start something or it being even this big monumental moment, uh, like even moments of living in Waco were harder for me 100%. than, than just moving back to Dallas or whatever it may, you know, may be. And so there's going to be seasons of getting uncomfortable. That means staying put. And then there's going to be seasons of getting uncomfortable. That means going and following where God is leading you and going into the unknown and going into the new. And I love what you said of just God, like changes from the Lord and things aren't meant to stay the same. Like yeah. we, I truly think we would be so bored if they were, if yeah. we had one season. I mean, think about it. How ready are you guys when summer is coming to an end and you're like fall I'm craving yeah. fall, like Christmas. Christmas. I can't wait for Christmas. It's like we we love seasons when it comes to holidays and when it comes to weather, yeah. but we have a hard time loving change in seasons when it comes to our life. But there's something beautiful about that change because like you said, it produces dependence. Yeah. It produces, you know, faith. I like, mean, it gets us on our knees to say, God, I need you. Yes. I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know what you have for me here, 100%. but I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And that's what change comes creates. That's yeah. what it produces. Yeah. Yeah. Change. I feel like change is God works in seasons and God, God sanctifies in seasons. And it doesn't mean that the next season is when you move, but he works seasonally. And so if you just stayed in that one season, um, if you've been in the same season for a long time, I would just say this, like God is doing something. Mm -hmm. He's doing something. You like, he never wastes seasons. That's good. And then God, it's like, he closes this chapter and you're like, Oh, thank the Lord. Okay. Now can I just coast for a little bit? And he's like, now we got a new one and he's mm -hmm. ever evolving his children because we're ever being sanctified more to his image. Yeah. And if we stayed in the same season comfortable, we would not look more like Christ That's because good. comfort is the enemy and the killer of calling. Mm. Comfort will kill your calling and we're addicted to it. It's why Lululemon is selling out. It's why <laughs> all these places are blowing up because we love Comfort. Everyone wants to wear sweats. I mean, I got it on right now. I it's got all pants I on that are into, comfortable. But, but he literally has a shirt on actually that says called is a calling. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> called. It's a calling. Yeah. And in order to, you know, be called in order to walk out your calling, you have to sacrifice comfort. You have to be okay with getting uncomfortable. And I think that's such a good point. And I love that you spoke to that Ecclesiastes three, um, verse. And I just encourage those of you who are in a season of change, whether you're in a season of waiting, whether you're in a season of refinement, a season of heartbreak, a season of joy and yeah. happiness, yeah. there is a season for everything. And I remember we were having a dinner conversation one night and we just like to ask each other intentional questions. What are you learning in scripture? You were going through the book of Ecclesiastes at the time. You were telling me about reading that passage. And then you asked me like, what season do you think you're in? And at the time we were living in Waco, you know, life was very different. I think I was pregnant at the time. I can't remember, but I remember you just saying like, what season do you think you're in and what season do you want this next chapter, this new chapter to look like and be like, and it was just such a fun conversation, but we were talking through all of those different things that Ecclesiastes three talks about, you know, the building up, the tearing down, the laughing and dancing, the mourning and weeping. I mean, there's just like all of these different descriptors. I would encourage you guys to go and read that chapter. Seriously, I would, I would grab a friend or a partner or someone and I I would just lay those out and be like, what season what are you season in right I now? Yeah. And what season do you think the Lord's leading you into? It's yeah. a really cool thing to do. 
It is because we're all in a season, whether it's a season of, like I was saying, joy and happiness, and maybe it is a season of comfort right now. And like some are together, you know. Yeah, and, and some are together. But I, I really f- was praying that this new season with baby coming and moving to a new town, I was like, I want this to be a season of joy and laughter like never before. And I know that it's going to come with a lot of pressing times and hard moments because moving to a new city and having a baby that we've never been parents before like it's going to bring some really challenging moments but my prayer has been you know that we would just experience joy like we never have before but I would say in Waco that was a refining hidden yeah. hard lonely season for me yeah. like it really it really was, it was and God really did hard. so much in my heart he stripped me of so much he humbled me he I feel like it was a lot of tearing things down yeah. and taking things out and yeah. so it felt very exposing it felt very I felt very like truly like naked and vulnerable of just like what am I doing God what are you doing but it was so good and it was hard it was hard but I was so dependent on him and I created my prayer closet and I would take walks and just like talk with the Lord and I would spend so much time alone with the Lord and I would memorize scripture and it gave me that time and that space and that season just created where I was able to be so alone with the Lord and dependent on the Lord and intimate with the Lord and not that I should pursue that in every season but there are some seasons where it's more active like having a baby I'm probably not going to have you know all the time in the world to just be in my prayer closet and to write out scripture and to memorize scripture like I did in this last season and so this last season prepared me for this season and so every season like the season you're in right now is preparing you for the next season you're about to walk into And that's something I I truly learned. Like I was reading about the life of Moses and how even him, like being in a season where he was living in the palace and in luxury, but he knew I wasn't made for this. Like I wasn't made to live in comfort. God has so much more for me. I'm called to, to fight for those who are in bondage. I'm called to speak out for those who are enslaved. And he knew God had more for his life and God called him out of that season of comfort. And he lived in the wilderness for like a long time, but in that wilderness season, he, that's where he picked up, he picked up a stick. He picked up a staff. And that stick and that staff was, you know, the very stick and the very staff that led him into the season where he went before Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. And he, and God performed signs and wonders. And so even in the wilderness season and in the season that was probably really hard and lonely for him, he just went from living in the palace, living in the highest place that you could possibly live in at the time to now living in the wilderness Like he picked up a useful tool, a useful thing that then prepared him and equipped him for the next season he was about to step into. And so I just share that because some of you may be in wilderness seasons or in waiting seasons or in really hidden hard seasons and what you're learning in this season and what you're going to pick up in this season will equip you and prepare you for the season God's about to take you to. And that's, that's hard because when you're in the wilderness, I mean, we talked about, we, we realized this the other day that we both read read um john bevere's book what is it god where are you god where are you and it talks all about the wilderness seasons and kurt i highly encourage you guys go read that book and it was really really helpful because when you're in the wilderness season you're just like all i want is to get out of this season yeah 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 but it's huge it's helpful it's it's a season that's necessary and like saying yes to the hard seasons is is like what the heart of god is looking for Mm. and if you're not in a hard season, which I would, I would probably be willing to bet like most of you are like life's just hard. Not, you don't, you don't meet a ton of people that are like, I'm just in a thriving season. I'm just season. floating. Life and is perfect. There are, there are seasons for that. I honestly feel like this summer was that for me. Like I feel like this summer was so good, but man, nobody sees the hard yeses to the Lord. And that is that is where everything flows from. He must crush you to produce that new wine. Mm -hmm. Like you must say yes to those wilderness callings, not because God just wants to like throw you off and leave you alone. He is so intentional. He builds everything from those seasons. Everything you see in Maddie and I was not built behind a camera in the high and a high like that is not what we are speaking from. We are speaking. (laughs) So true from a very humble, teary-eyed place of 
God Almighty is worth it no matter what season you're in. He's unchanging, but also he will put you in seasons that feel like you're going to die. And when you say yes to Jesus in those moments, he will produce something in you that when now, now as we step into Tennessee from Nashville or from, from Waco, because of how hard Waco was, it developed a confidence an assurance and authority. It developed Mm -hmm. a breaking and a humility and it developed our prayer life. It developed so many things that we're now walking into Tennessee with. And it's easy for people on the outside just to see you walking into Tennessee. And they're like, dude, they look awesome. They look like they're having fun, but you did not see what forged and prepared that heart and that spirit. And so where you're at right now, your prayer is this, Lord, do not deliver me until you've developed me. It's good. He's developing something in you and you're wondering. So when we say change, don't think move. For a lot of you, change is new job, change is new boss, change is new apartment, change is parents got divorced, change is your sister just got diagnosed with that or your, bro, bro, your boyfriend broke up with you. Change is every little thing. And so you got to ask God, what are you teaching me in this change? And do mm-hmm. not deliver me from it, although that's all I want until you've developed all you want in me. And I just read Hebrews 12. It says this, in the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but it is producing the peaceful fruit of righteousness. God disciplines his children. God disciplines his children. Are you being disciplined right now? If so, let him do his work. Mm. Because when he's finished doing his work, it's going to be better than you could ever ask or imagine. Mm. And it talks about in, in Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews 5, how even Jesus himself learned obedience through what he suffered. And so in the seasons of suffering, in the seasons of hardship and discipline and trial and tribulation, it feels like, why do I feel like I just keep getting kicked while I'm already down? Like, why do I feel like nothing's working out? Those are seasons where if you allow God to work in your heart, that is where you learn true obedience. That is where you learn true dependence. That is where your faith grows to levels. Your intimacy with Jesus grows to levels that nothing in the high or the spotlight or the joy can produce because in this world, like truly the way that we get so intertwined and close with Jesus, I can't even like put it into words. And I don't think I'll ever be able to fully comprehend it on this side of eternity, but the the way we get so intimate with Jesus truly is through suffering. It's through dying to ourselves. It's through picking up our cross. You want to be a disciple of Jesus? It literally says you must deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. That's what, that's Jesus's invitation to being his follower. That's what it looks like. And so nothing about that is comfortable. Nothing about that is easy. Nothing about that is just like happy go lucky. And even looking at marriage, like so many people watching this podcast, it might be like, I just want to be married. I would be comfortable and happy if I was just married or if I just found my spouse. And we like to say, and like we've read in so many amazing godly books on marriage, marriage is meant to make you holy, not happy. Do we have moments of laughing and joy and happiness? For sure. Absolutely. And you want that in a marriage. You want to be able to find ways to make life full of joy, even when they're hard. But The purpose of marriage, the purpose of Grant saying yes to me and me saying yes to Grant is for us to make each other more like Jesus and to make each other holy, not just to be happy. And the same thing goes for us in everyday life, in your singleness, in your dating, in your engagement, in your marriage, no matter your relationship status, no matter your season of life. The goal and the role of the Holy Spirit in your life is to make you holy, not happy. And there's going to be seasons of happiness and there's going to be seasons of joy and bliss. And it's like, can life get any better? And those are seasons to treasure and seasons to seriously thank God for and rejoice. But there's going to also be a lot of times of hardship. And those are moments to lean into and say, okay, God, right now you're, you're, you're making me holy. You're making me more like you. And there's, um, it talks about, I think it's in James five where it's talking about just prayer in all circumstances. And it's saying, Hey, whether you're, you're suffering and you need healing or whether, you know, God's giving you everything that, that you want right now and everything's going great. And whether you're in a season of lack or a season of abundance or whether you're in a high or a low 
pray continually, give thanks, like never stop praying. And it, it goes on to say, just like, okay, if, if, if God, if God, if life is good, then thank the Lord. Like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that everything is, is looking the way that I want it to right now. If you're in a season of hardship and nothing is looking the way you want it to, and life is really, really hard. Okay, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm leaning on you. I'm looking to you. I need you. And those are the seasons of life and, and it ebbs and it flows and it doesn't always stay one way or the other. And there have been seasons of my life that I've called mentors and I've called friends and I've been in such a low and I'm like, do you ever think that I will be happy again? Like, do you think God wants me? Do you think I'll ever experience happiness again? I've had those moments mm -hmm. and I know moments where you felt really anxious where you're like, do you think I'll ever be free? Do you think I'll ever experience like a lightness again and a joy again? And then there's seasons where I'm like, you're thriving and you're living your best life. And so life ebbs and flows and yeah. just know like whatever season you're in, yeah. it's going to change eventually. Yeah. And there is a reason for the season that you're in. And I love what you're speaking to. And I want to dive into that more because what you're talking about, about who we are today and the reason we're able to have the faith that we have and the intimacy we have with Jesus and the way we're able to even quote scripture and speak with authority and encourage you guys in your journey and with faith and with confidence is because of the low seasons that God stripped us and humbled us yeah. and produced something in us that the seasons of highs wouldn't have. And I think what, when I look back at my life, that season of Birmingham for me right before going on The Bachelor was so crucial. It was one of the hardest seasons of my life. Mm -hmm. I was so lonely. I was going through a really hard breakup. I was dealing with some health stuff and there were just a lot of, I was not content in my job and my job was really, really hard. So there were just almost every area of my life felt hard <laughs> and it felt lonely and it felt just like God where are you and that's actually when I read that book God where are you but in that season I was on my face on my knees desperate for Jesus reading God's word probably like four hours every day because I didn't have any friends and so like I was in the word of God 24 7 yeah. memorizing scripture and he was developing something like you were saying he was developing something in me in that season that I didn't know what I was about to head into but God used that season to prepare me for the season that was to come that when I went on the bachelor and I was faced with so much temptation and so much pressure and so many eyes on me and all of these different situations and even coming off the bachelor and then being presented with all of these glamorous opportunities. And it would have been really easy for me to like lose my faith. It would have been really easy for me to compromise on the show and coming off the show that season in Birmingham that was so hard prepared me to be able to stand firm in a season where it was there was plenty and there was abundance and there was opportunity and there was all of these things that a lot of us want to chase after, you know, and God developed something in me in that really hard season that gave me the strength to withstand temptation and pressure in the season of high and in the season of abundance. And I think that is huge. And you had that season in Branson. Mm -hmm. And a little bit in Waco too, mm -hmm. right? For sure. Would you say? For sure. Yeah, for sure. So like, man, it's, it's so good. There's so much in there. So I just feel like for wherever you're at, like there's just so much to take from Maddie's story. And the danger of just doing things online is somebody could perceive Maddie and I as like, oh, they've always been that way or must be nice or, or whatever. Or I bet they do this because they think it's, there's some awesome, it's like, we do this simply because God has broken us in different parts of our life mm -hmm. and rebuilt us. And we want to use some of that story to help one person. And God has given the avenue of technology. So we sit here today simply to tell you change is hard. Wilderness seasons are real, mm -hmm. but let him move into those parts of your heart that he's rewiring together and then tell your story, tell it. And that's simply what we're doing here today. So whatever change you're in right now, God is unchanging and it's tempting to mm. believe you've left me, God. He yeah. has not left you. 
He will not leave you. Sometimes he makes his presence less known, but it does not mean he is any further from you. And so as he lets you walk through this heat and this wilderness, he's right there. He's Mm -hmm. unchanging and he's doing something in you and you're going to be better for it if you hold the faith, if you stay in it. And so stay in it. Yeah. Stay in the fight right now. That's our encouragement. Yeah, that's really, really good. And I want to share James 117. I'm just going to read it straight from my phone. And it says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And I love that because I think a lot of times we can see the Lord as, why are you giving me all of these bad things? Why are you letting all of these bad things happen? And this is such a reminder. James 117 is reminding us every good and perfect gift comes from above. So what is not good and perfect is not from the Lord yet. Sometimes he allows things to happen to us or allows us to go through seasons to create in us a holiness, a posture of dependence, a posture of surrender. And also that verse encourages us and reminds us that even though our seasons are changing, even though the ebbs and the flows of life come, he does not change. He does not change like the shifting shadows. He is constant. He is a rock. He is a place of refuge that we can run to. And just thinking practically, something that I really like to do in seasons of change and transition and things that have really, really helped me is prayer and being able to pray just the names of Jesus, just the names of who the Lord is out loud and just say, Lord, you are my peace in times of uncertainty in times of anxiety in times of things looking crazy and different. Like, I just thank you that you are my peace. And I just, I claim peace right now. I, I, I cling to you. I pray that you would not only give me peace, but you would be my peace right now in this season. And if I'm feeling just overwhelmed or stressed and I don't know what to do, I'm reminded of Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, that he says, come to me when you're weary and burdened and I will give you rest. He is our rest and we get to run to him and we get to come to him. And I'm reminded of, um, it talks about in, in Psalm that he is a strong tower, a place of refuge that we can run to and find safety. And his name is that refuge that we can call upon and say, Lord, I call upon your name. You are a great refuge in times of uncertainty and in times of trouble. I run to you and I cling to you. And so that's just a practical thing that I like to do, um, in seasons of change and uncertainty, um, that I just wanted to, to give you guys and, One thing that as we wrap up, I would love to just briefly touch on because we talked a lot about hard seasons and seasons of change and it looking hard and wilderness and waiting and all that. But I also think that there's seasons of change that are really good and really amazing. And it's like sometimes we get the very things that we prayed for and it still can be overwhelming and it still can be, I mean, finding out that we were pregnant was like the greatest gift and the greatest blessing ever. And it's a season of change and it's come with a lot of feelings and a lot of emotions and feeling overwhelmed. And I've had moments of like, Oh my goodness, am I ready to be a mom? Am I prepared? Like, God, okay, what do I, okay. I got to learn this about birth and I got to learn this about parenting and I got to learn that. And it's like, and everyone has an opinion and everyone's. And so even that season of change or moving to Nashville, like even really good things, Mm -hmm. even when we got engaged, like engagement season was really hard for us. us. And the first six months of marriage was really hard for us. And so even seasons that you're stepping into newness and it's a a good thing, good thing yeah. can still be really hard. Yes. Like, what would you say about that? Like in seasons that you've stepped into, even when you started working at Harris, Harris Creek, Creek and when we got married and those were seasons of good and change that was good, but it still was overwhelming and it was hard. Yeah. It's the only way you grow. It's the only way you grow. So like when you work out, the only way your muscle grows is that when it goes under extreme tension. And you're pulling That's up good. this tension. It's the only way your muscle grows. And so the Lord grows his children, even through good things, but by change that forces you to grow. So I started this job at Harris Creek. Everything's uncomfortable. Everything's good. I prayed for this. It's a dream job. I literally dreamed of what I was doing. And it was so hard, mm. so hard teary-eyed nights. I'm not good enough. All these things. And I walk out of this job after two years and I'm like, 
I am stronger. I am different. And so the Lord grows us. First, it starts with things like when you're young and you're learning how to read or how to spell, then you get older and all of a sudden you're in high school, then you go to college and you're like freedom. Then you're a young adult and you're paying rent and then you're, you get married. That's a massive change. (laughs) Then you have a baby. That's a massive change. You see these, this just like this rhythm that God just keeps maturing as you get older. He new things, harder things. Mm. When you were in eighth grade, you weren't thinking about tax returns and like <laughs> your baby, but, yeah. but, but just your capacity grows and he grows you. He equips you for and it. And he equips you for it. What we've learned through pregnancy is he shows you new aspects of his ever beautiful character. Mm. He sh- so the older you get with him, the more you walk with him, it's like he's like, I'm just revealing more and more of myself. Through marriage, we've seen more of God than we ever saw in singleness. Yeah. And, and, and through having a baby, it's like I'm learning another glimpse of God's crazy love. By That's the way, good. I'm starting to love this baby. That's really good. Yeah, I lo- I love that because... I think that's so true. And I think a lot of times we think, you know, you're talking about that when you first start working out and it's really uncomfortable. You guys, I've not been good with working out. I need to get back. <laughs> he calls me out. He's like, when are you going to work out Come today? On, Mad I am working out this week, guys. Be proud. So pregnancy, I've not been very consistent with working out, but I'm about to witness in these next few days because I have not been working out consistently when I start getting back in the gym, like it's going to be hard. It's going to be really, really hard when I'm starting, you know, these movements that my body's not used to. And I'm moving my arms and my legs in ways that I have, you know, and it's like, it's uncomfortable and my muscles aren't, um, what's the word? They're not strong and they're getting stronger. The more that I do it and the more consistent as, as I stay to it, as I stay in it. And I think for a lot of us, when we get into seasons of new and those seasons of growth, like, because that's what it is, is when you get married, so much is being exposed and you're growing because you're like, oh, it's not just me anymore. And I can't just do me and do whatever I was doing before, you know, in starting a new job, things are being exposed in you because it's, it's new and you're learning something new that you weren't doing before. And I think we can get in those moments sometimes. And if we're not immediately good at something or it doesn't come natural or easy, we're like, oh, this isn't from God or, or yeah, I'm out. And it can be really easy to just bow out or to, to play the, you know, like, oh, that, that wasn't from the Lord because it was just like hard. And it's like, no, what? No, sometimes, sometimes we should know it's from the Lord because it's It's hard. hard, like, because it creates greater faith and greater dependence. And because like you mentioned at the beginning, it's disciplining us, it's growing us and it's growing our character to become more and more like the Lord. When you first started working at Harris Creek, you were doing things that were not natural for you at first, like the spreadsheets and the like, like there, you were doing some things that did not come like for your brain and for your skill set that were uncomfortable and that weren't natural, but in doing them more and more, you grew and you became yeah. better. And for what God had for me, I had to learn these skills. You had to learn it. And it's the same. There's a story. You, you should read Exodus 3. It's amazing. It's when Moses is just leaving Egypt. And before he's been called by God, he's in the wilderness watching his father-in-law's sheep. Left the palace of Pharaoh. He was the grandson of Pharaoh. Living in the palace. He's now run away, living in the wilderness gets married in the wilderness and his father-in-law gives him these sheep to watch over like 40 sheep. And he's watching over these sheep and he's walking them through the wilderness. And in Exodus three, it says Moses walks with these sheep through the wilderness to Mount Horeb. Okay. Pause right there. What you're going to read later is that is such a foreshadowing. Can you imagine how small Moses felt, how insignificant Moses felt, how pointless Moses felt in that moment from, I was in the palace to I'm in the wilderness with these sheep that aren't even mine, that aren't even listening to me. And we're just walking to this mountain. One year later from that moment, Moses would not be walking sheep through that same wilderness Mm. to that same mountain. He would be walking God's people, wow. 1 million people through that wilderness to that same mountain. Can you be trusted with the small? Mm. Can you be trusted with the insignificant? Can you be trusted with what seems like it's pointless, but God says, if you're faithful in this, I'm preparing you for what I have. And there's things that I learned all along the way that I wanted to skip 
But the Lord's like, if you would have not learned those skills, so I good. could not trust you with this. So whatever feels small is not small. Mm. It's big. And can God, there's a verse in the Bible that says, whoever is faithful with the little will be faithful with the much, but whoever is dishonest with the little will be dishonest with much. So can good. you be trusted with more by the way you're handling what God has entrusted to you now? That's really, really good. Because I think in our generation and, and in our world today, what we have to fight as human beings is like we all want to chase after the glamour, the spotlight. Everyone wants to be Moses leading the Israelites out. Right. Everyone wants to be David on the throne. Yeah. Everyone wants to be Joseph, you know, like in charge of all the people. Everyone wants the the crown, but no one wants the cross. Everyone wants the spotlight, but no one wants the refining and the hardship and the wilderness seasons, yeah. but you don't get one without the other. Yeah. And that's what Jesus modeled for us. That's what Moses demonstrated for us. That's what David, like we see through the life of David. I mean, nothing about David's life was easy, comfortable, and glamorous, but mm. yet we see, oh, King David, the one who was after God's own heart. That's what we remember. Oh, David who killed Goliath. Yes, those are parts of his story, but a lot of his story was he was the shepherd boy. And then he was, you know, the boy who played the, what was the harp? Yeah. Like played the harp for the king who essentially ended up trying to kill him because yeah. he was jealous of him. And then he, you know, had many moments of being on the run and running from that king that was trying to kill him and was living in caves and was also living out in the wilderness and had a lot of seasons like that on the run in uncertainty. His own son was trying to kill him at a point in his life and he went on the run again. And you see that multiple times throughout scripture, these mighty men, these mighty women of God that go through these seasons of preparation, of hardship, of loneliness, of hiddenness, of refining. And if you don't go through that, you're not going to be prepared for what God has for you. And that's not, yeah. who knows what our big moments of courage and calling look like. We don't, I don't, yours may not look like mine. Mine may not look like his. All of our calling is different, but if we are not faithful with the small moments that God entrusts to us every single day, yeah. the way that we handle the person, you know, at the, at the coffee shop or at the grocery store, when no one's around the way that we handle our purity, when we're alone in our room, when no one's around the way that we talk to our parents or to our friends or about our friends when no one's like when we handled those small moments well when we steward our finances well when we steward our purity well when we steward our our job the job God has given us even if it's not where we want to be you know doing the small things well prepares us for when those big moments of opportunity come we're ready for them. And God's not going to entrust to us. Like Grant is saying, God's not going to give us that big moment, that big opportunity if we're not handling the small moments well. And so many of us are chasing after the spotlight. Right. And I just want to encourage you guys. I want to be the first to, I want to go first in this way. And I want to be the one who encourages you on this podcast. Stay true. Let's be a people that doesn't yeah. chase after the spotlight, but chases after Jesus and chases after holiness and chases after alone moments moments with the Lord. It would even say uh, when you read through the gospels about the life of Jesus, that even though he would have these moments of speaking in front of crowds, it would say he would withdraw and he would go before the Lord and pray. Mm. He would have constantly these moments of just like getting alone before the Lord. And he was the Lord, but he would submit to the father and he would say, I need you. And if Jesus Christ has to submit to the father and say, I need you, how much more should we? And so our goal should not be to chase after the crowd, the following, the spotlight, the camera. Our goal should be to chase after Jesus and to steward what he's already given us really well. And if he wants to give us the big opportunity, if he wants to give a moment of opportunity in the spotlight, great, but we don't chase after it, right? And so steward those small moments well. I think that's such a good word. And I just hope this was encouraging to you guys. We really had no plan for this podcast. We really did just press we record. Press record. And we did not plan anything. No. So we didn't know where this was going. But I do know that this is helpful for wh wherever you are in life because we really did touch on everything. And yeah. like we said, there's a time and a season for everything. And you can't necessarily control the season that you're in right now. But you can steward it really well. And you can 
can submit it to the Lord and you can choose to allow God to work in you and develop something in you um, and know that he is preparing you for something. And there is something to come that you're going to need to learn in this season Mm. to walk ready and confident in the season that's to come. And so let us not speak from a place of, you know, eloquence or like we have this all perfectly figured out. We are in a season of change and transition, and I'm not even saying I'm handling it perfectly well because I'm not. I'm learning with you guys. We're growing with you guys. And every season, God is exposing things in us and refining things in us. And we just want to speak from a place of, of brokenness and vulnerability of, of what God is doing and what God has taught us and what he's teaching us right now. So we love you all so much. And uh, and let us know how this encouraged you and what you took from it, what season you're in, what season you hope to be in. I love that question that Grant said, you know, go read Ecclesiastes 3 and ask yourself, like, what season am I in right now? And what season do I feel like God is leading me into? Those are good questions to even talk about with, with your friends, your, your community. I think that's it. You got anything else? I don't think so. For the peeps? That was a really good. It's really a good glad word. We did it. It's a good word. I'm glad we guys, I'm glad we brought you guys into just where our apartments are right now yeah. with just boxes everywhere. And we'll have to show you guys. I don't know where I'm going to be recording this podcast. I'll be honest. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Just you guys are along for the journey. Um, it might look like this. We might just be in the living room. We do have another room here that I might turn into like a little mini podcast studio. So we will see how this goes and and where we'll be recording the podcast. But we just love you guys. We always want to be real and, and vulnerable and honest with where we're at and what we're walking through and what God's teaching us right now. So we're in the midst of change and transition yes. and wanted to talk about that. Hope pray it was encouraging us. to you guys. Please pray, pray for, for us. Pray for us for real. Pray <laughs> yeah. for us. We will always take the prayers. We're praying for you guys. We love you guys. We believe in you guys. And as always, stay you, stay true. We love you. Peace.